SpaceX has officially confirmed it. Ship 36 was completely destroyed in a catastrophic explosion at the Massey site, and the cause was a COPV, a high-pressure composite overwrapped pressure vessel once considered highly reliable. But here's the strange part. They haven't released a detailed explanation of what exactly went wrong. Now, a credible source from within SpaceX has hinted that this might not be just an accident. Could this have been sabotaged? That might sound wild, but it lines up with the whispers we've been hearing across the space community. So, what really happened, and what are the solutions to the COPV failure? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Before we jump into the main story, there's some good news. At 2.30 a.m. on June 25th, SpaceX and NASA successfully launched the Axiom 4 mission aboard Crew Dragon. But this wasn't your typical cargo run. This flight carried four astronauts from four different countries, along with around 60 science experiments and outreach projects representing 31 nations. Some of those experiments? They're big deals for human health. We're talking muscle loss, osteoporosis in aging, cardiovascular research, immune system studies, stuff that could really impact life both in space and back on Earth. And once again, SpaceX proved the value of its vehicle, not just for flying people to orbit safely, but for pushing science forward and strengthening ties with NASA. Dragon is expected to dock with the space station on Thursday morning around 7 a.m. As always, the SpaceX team will celebrate the smooth flight, but this time, they'll be heading straight back to the mess at Massey. Cleanup work at the site has been making good progress lately, but there have been some hiccups. While lifting a heavy chunk of twisted metal, one of the cranes lost balance and tipped over. Luckily, the operator was fine. In reality, the company wouldn't be facing this kind of damage at their test site if it weren't for a single faulty COPV that blew up Ship 36. Aerial images show just how severe the destruction really was. Still, with lessons learned from past Falcon failures, they're expecting to clean up the mess in about a month. The company has released an official statement on the incident, confirming that initial analysis indicates the potential failure of a pressurized tank, known as a COPV, or composite overwrapped pressure vessel, containing gaseous nitrogen in Starship's nose cone area, but the full data review is ongoing. Clearly, with such vague and limited information, it's hard to get a clear picture of what exactly happened in the explosion. So let's break it down and take a closer look at what might have really gone on. First, let's get to the root of what a COPV actually is. It stands for Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel. This is a lightweight, high-pressure tank, usually made of an aluminum liner wrapped in multiple layers of carbon fiber composite. That wrapping is key for safely storing gases like nitrogen or helium, which are used to pressurize various systems on a rocket. Take the Space Shuttle, for example. It was packed with COPVs of both cylindrical and spherical shapes, scattered throughout the vehicle, especially around the engine section, fuselage, and nose cone. On Starship, COPVs are located inside the payload bay or nose cone area. They play a critical role in things like venting nitrogen to pressurize liquid oxygen from the fuel tank to the engines, helping ensure the Raptor engines start up smoothly. However, it seems that during the recent Starship test, the COPV didn't perform as intended. The pressure inside may have exceeded the tank's limits, causing it to rupture, or it might have been partially cracked during transport from the supplier to SpaceX. The force was strong enough to punch a hole through the windward side of the vehicle and damage several critical structures, including fuel lines and the forward dome. That allowed propellant to leak out, catch fire, and eventually triggered the massive explosion that destroyed Ship 36. What makes this situation even more difficult is that this appears to be a completely new kind of failure. Musk even said, If further investigation confirms that this is what happened, it is the first time ever for this design. That clarification is important, especially when you consider Falcon 9's history with COPV issues during the CRS-7 mission in 2015 and the AMOS-6 incident in 2016. According to Advanced Structural Technologies, a manufacturer and supplier of COPVs, safety is always the top priority. Each industry has its own set of standards when it comes to COPV testing. For example, the aerospace sector follows standards developed by the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, 
which set performance-based requirements verified through a combination of analysis and testing. But achieving high safety and reliability doesn't stop at testing. It comes from strict adherence to procedures throughout the entire life cycle of the pressure vessel. That includes design, manufacturing, testing, handling, and operation. In fact, during any standard production process, each COPV is thoroughly inspected, and the margin for error is incredibly low, often less than 0.1%. They also confirmed that one of the main causes of COPV failures or explosions is improper handling, usually after the tank leaves the factory and ends up in the customer's hands. And that only adds to the suspicion, could this have been a case of sabotage? Well, before the Massey accident, a SpaceX employee posted on X, claiming that several local workers who lacked experience or any background in aerospace had violated strict handling procedures for COPVs. He described careless behavior, like slamming the COPVs against newly modified mounts inside the payload bay. He pointed out that these workers were part of the so-called tent-era crew, referring to temporary hires. According to him, they lacked expertise, followed outdated habits, and often joked around while ignoring procedures. On the professional side, he stated that he was one of only two certified COPV inspectors on site. Their job was to process issued tickets, assess damage from impact, and evaluate the condition of each COPV. But here's the strange part. After flagging improper handling practices, he was suddenly barred from accessing the payload sections of two starships. This left him frustrated and increasingly disillusioned. It's worth noting that this individual has extensive experience in the Air Force. He had worked under Indopacom, helping protect sensitive military operations. So, he was no stranger to strict safety protocols and discipline. What he witnessed at the site stood in sharp contrast to that. Whether or not this was an act of sabotage remains unclear. But, if it turns out to be true, then maybe it's time for SpaceX to take a hard look at its workforce and retrain safety procedures. After all, every person working on Starship plays a part in making it better and pushing the program forward. So. What does SpaceX need to do now to make sure a COPV explosion like this never happens again on future starships? Let's break this down from a few different angles, starting with the type of COPV that SpaceX is currently using. Right now, there are five main types of COPVs, type 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Each has its own strengths, weaknesses, and ideal use cases. For Starship, SpaceX uses Type 3 COPVs, especially in the payload nose area and in places like the engine section or pressure in tanks. Type 3 is significantly lighter, about 30% less than Type 1 or 2, but still strong enough to handle extremely high pressures, even in the hundreds of bars. Its aluminum liner helps prevent gas leaks, especially for tricky gases like helium, nitrogen, or hydrogen, which tend to seep through other materials more easily. This tech is already well proven and widely used in aerospace, including on SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Starship. The manufacturing process, including pressure testing and auto fretage, is standardized. But even with all that, we just saw what happened with Ship 36. So now the big question is, should SpaceX move to Type 5 COPVs? Because Type 3 isn't the most advanced out there. That title goes to Type 5 COPVs. These are made entirely from composite materials, no metal or polymer liner at all. They're the lightest of the bunch, up to 90% lighter than traditional tanks. Right now, they're mostly used in high-end military and cutting-edge aerospace applications, and haven't yet made their way into mainstream commercial use. Still, their potential is huge. Type 5s offer more usable volume and drastically reduce mass, making them a perfect fit for long-duration missions or payload-optimized designs like, say, a trip to Mars. The catch? The tech still needs more time to mature. It's expensive, and it has to prove itself in terms of durability, reliability, and leak prevention before SpaceX can realistically adopt it. But if they can crack those challenges, especially lowering production costs and improving gas tightness, Type 5 could become the new standard for future starships. So, what do you think about this idea? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take on it. Alright, next up, some aerospace experts have pointed out that Starship's integrated testing process might not be thorough enough to catch certain failure points. 
Components like COPVs, for example, can pass bench tests just fine, but still fail under real-world conditions, like when exposed to cryogenic fluids or full vibration loads. These kinds of issues might stay hidden until they lead to something serious. A more focused and rigorous standalone testing campaign might have caught the COPV flaw that ultimately doomed Ship 36. One possible approach would be to apply non-destructive evaluation techniques, just like NASA has done in the past. These methods include ultrasonic testing, radiography, and eddy current inspections to detect cracks, defects, or damage in the composite layers and metal liners of COPVs without damaging the tanks themselves. On top of that, they could use advanced software like NASGRO to analyze how cracks grow under repeated pressure cycles. And as grow is based on linear elastic fracture mechanics and can predict the crack growth rate and the overall lifespan of a COPV. If any irregularities show up during analysis, the tank can be quickly flagged, removed, and replaced before it becomes a risk. Ultimately, it all comes down to giving the vehicle a thorough final check before launch. Not just the COPVs, but also the fuel lines, Raptor engines, and the onboard flight control systems. Catching even the smallest issue ahead of time could be the difference between failure and success, even if it only improves the odds by 1%. Although Ship 36 was lost in the explosion, there are still two more Block 2 starships, Ship 37 and Ship 38, currently being prepared to take its place. But the real blow was the damage to Massey, the key site where SpaceX conducts static fires and cryogenic tests. The static fire stand was heavily damaged, and even more concerning, all the pipelines leading to the methane storage facility were completely destroyed. That said, SpaceX has proven time and again just how fast they can turn disaster zones back into operational sites. Remember when they blew up the entire launch mount during Starship's first flight and accidentally dug a massive crater? They rebuilt it in just three months, and this time, They've got better equipment and a much larger workforce, they'll probably bounce back just as fast. Musk is still shooting for the first crewed Mars mission as early as next year to catch the next transfer window. Realistically, that's a long shot. He's already put the odds at roughly 50-50, even before this latest setback. Rushing things at this stage wouldn't be wise. SpaceX might hold off on launching Starship for a while, but they'll be back. And when they return, they'll be ready to prove that this game is far from over. It's only just getting started.